Let's talk about the few things that I really love about this motorcycle and few things that I don't. I'm doing clutchless upshifts like a piece of cake when you're using it for navigation through the screen. Akka. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are and when you're watching this, welcome to a new vlog. You see these two nice bikes in the background. Man, I think I have the best color schemes of both the bikes. The multi in that red, white and black and this black and yellow or black and gold scheme looks perfect. In case you are hearing a lot of background noise, there's some construction work going on. Man, this area was dead when we first moved here in 2003, but now it's full. Anyway, wanted to talk more about why I got the Himalayan when I already have an ADV. That's a sports tourer. This, has a, this is a more off-road oriented adventure tourer. Both are different bikes and I'll talk more about it on the road because it's kind of too loud here. Instead of traversing this long high tech city traffic, let me take a detour. Okay. Let's talk about the few things that I really love about this motorcycle and few things that I don't. This is just my first ride impressions, not a detailed review. I'll do a more cinematic review uh, at a later point. For now, I just want to give you my quick first ride impressions because the delivery is fresh in the mind of yours. I really love how plush the suspension is on these bad stretches. I mean, even when you're cornering in bad sections, the rear suspension handles it really well. And you see, I'm doing clutchless upshifts like a piece of cake. That's second to fifth. I can even do downshifts. You see, five to second. Did you see how I did clutchless upshifts on a 400cc single cylinder bike? That's how smooth the gearbox is, although I would not recommend people to try without enough practice because I'm used to doing that on my track bike, the RC390. This is the smoothest clutchless upshift side that I did after my Ducati. That has a quick shifter and an auto blipper, but this has nothing. I don't do second to first uh, without the clutch. That's a bit harsh on the motorcycle. Downshifts are a bit tricky, by the way. You need to blip the throttle a bit, whereas for like, see? I had to increase the throttle a bit to match the revs. One, I love the suspension. Two, I love the gearbox. I love how smooth the engine is, but in peak traffic like this, you have to use only first gears. You need to be at least about 2000 RPM. In slightly moving traffic, you can use the second gear, but when you have bumper to bumper, you need to use the first gear. I think this might not be such a great city bike, although I would still give it 7 out of 10 because of the suspension and the way you sit in traffic. It doesn't get too hot. I mean, that's coming from a Ducati owner, so take it with a pinch of salt. I'm used to heat, but it does get warm like most bikes, but the heat is dissipated well. Uh, what else do I like? I'm searching for bad roads <laughs> on this bike. Another thing that I really like about this bike is the instrument cluster. I am a fan of this dash. The resolution can be a bit sharper, but in terms of features, this is one of the best. I mean, the Google Maps feature is really useful. Although I wish they can give an option where you can lock the screen to use the maps. I think that's more to do with uh, Apple phone because that happens even my, with my Ducati navigation, I need to keep the screen on. So I don't think it's entirely Royal Enfield's fault that you need to use that. But a counter fact to that is, if you put phone as a navigation, your screen is on anyway. So you need to charge your phone either way when you're using it for navigation through the screen, akka. Through the screen or through the phone. That showed you an example of the brakes. They are decent, not the sharpest, but they do stop. This is good off-road. On regular highways and streets, when I see people doing these top speed runs and all, I'm scared, man. Like, this is a capable bike that can do 160, mid 160s, but if you don't have the stopping power, why do you want to risk it? Anyway, love the instrument cluster. Braking is decent, not the best, but it's more suited for off-roading and soft-roading. Things that I really, really hate on this bike is the side stand. <laughs> I'm sure you would have seen some videos of how much it leans to the side. I'm trying to consciously stay at 4000 RPM, but it's hard. 
the running in period says you need to stay under 4000 rpm for at least what uh, till the first service which is 500 kilometers and i looked at the service bills the yearly cost is around 2000 to 3000 rupees that's it so in terms of service this is one of the low maintenance cost bikes what one can buy anyway those are the few uh, things that i really like and don't like about this bike we'll do a detailed review at a later point so let's address the elephant in the room why did i get this when i already had an adv first of all that's a sports tourer you can't off-road in that still i did with a different set of tires uh, when i went to umningla check out the video here man it was challenging but scary i had constant fear of dropping it because in case the rim the alloy rim gets bent on that motorcycle that would cost me at least four lakhs the cost of this motorcycle is 3.5 on road for me that's what it costed even when you're touring if you go slightly fast on like a bad bump or get that nasty pothole that can bend those uh, forged magnesium rims and <laughs> I can't imagine how much I would hate to have that happen. So whenever I go on the highways, I am very cautious. I don't want to ride in the night because sometimes you can't see without proper lighting. Luckily, we have some lights, but still, I am extremely cautious when I'm touring on the Pikes Peak. That's meant for like really sporty touring. So keeping all those things in mind, that was one off-road and slight uh, dirt trails are one area where I felt some void and I wanted to fulfill that void with an off-roader. Impulse was uh, very high on the list, but the problem with Impulse is it's slightly underpowered. I mean, for us getting used to these big motorcycles, Impulse felt very uh, too light. I had only one test ride, but I didn't enjoy the experience. 390 Adventure is something that I really enjoyed when I test rode Edwin's uh, motorcycle. But the problem with 390 Adventure is now it has gone to 4 to 5 lakhs price bracket, which is a bit too high for me. So when I first heard about the Himalayans launch, I was hoping it to be slightly better than the existing one. But the specs on this, 40 horsepower, 40 nm of torque. And once I rode it, I was just super impressed. I took a chance. Uh, by booking it like I did the Scrambler 400X and the Speed 400. Speed 400 because it was more to do with nostalgia of uh, missing my street win. But then uh, Scrambler was the one I was um, very interested in. Cancel that because after the test ride I felt something is missing in that motorcycle. It felt heavy. But this bike, even though it's heavier than that by at least 10 kilos, feels more nimble. It just feels nice to ride and that's something which convinced me to go for the Himalayan 450 over the Scrambler 400X. But either way, that was a soft roader and this is this can do better off-roading which is my intention. So I'm gonna decrease the weight on this motorcycle as much as possible because this will be going mostly on trails and off-roading, not on tours because for me I have a touring motorcycle. I just want to learn and improve my skills off-road and this is what I think is the perfect vehicle for that. Anyway, that's it for today's vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. This is another vlog that I just wanted to make without much of an edit because there is a track session happening this weekend and I'm heading there. So till then I wanted to have a quick video out. After this, the track video is something I'm still planning how to shoot. I don't want to shoot it like the regular videos. So maybe we'll have uh, the South India trip and then the review of this video and uh, maybe something interesting for the track. We'll see. Uh, these are the three videos I'm planning uh, for the next two, three months. There are not going to be many videos. A lot of you have been requesting, please upload regular videos, but I'm done posting videos just for the heck of uh, YouTube because the views don't justify the work that you put in. In that regard, I want to really put out content that I enjoy making. So I'm decreasing a bit on the volume, but increasing the quality. Let's see how it goes. I need all your support, guys. Hello. Bye-bye. Take care.